Morning, everyone. It's great to be able to do another devotion for you. It's a very clear and crisp morning here in Heidelberg. And I want to tell you about a course I did through the Wesley House at Cambridge University in the UK. The course is called Drawing Closer to God, and it's designed for patrons to observe and study artwork of other Christians. Um, it equips you with the necessary tools to realize the message the artist is trying to portray without taking away your own unique perspective of the artwork. There's an artist called Hugo de Hayes that is fascinated with the movement of the human body. He constructed a wooden male figure and cut it horizontally in 19 places. He laid it face down and attached each piece to a cable, wheels and an engine. So every time someone would walk past the statue, the engines start to turn and the statue would start to make its way up, piece by piece, each following each other within seconds and the choreography lasts about 1 minute and 20 seconds until the statue is up and then it is lowered down and the whole process starts again when the next person walks by. This piece of artwork is Kuyor. When the artist was asked what the inspiration was for this specific artwork, he said he took into consideration the concepts of dying and rising. When I saw the statue and how it moves, I was struck by its stillness, the lifelessness, and then as soon as someone passes, it sprang to life. When I relate the concept of death and rising to the movement, I am reminded that the process of Jesus' death until resurrection was a cleansing process, making the old new, dying of sin and the resurrection of new life, and the opportunity for mankind to rise with Jesus into new life. For me, the cure resembles a figure defeated by sin, laying face down like a soldier that was slain in battle, waiting for the one to pass and breathe new life into him, making him move and come to life again. There was a statement made that says, art was central to human existence, and morality and creativity were aligned with it. We must remember that Jesus was brought up as a carpenter, following in his earthly father's footsteps, who created functional artwork from pieces of wood. But the most profound piece of artwork was the wooden cross that was instrumental in the death of Jesus Christ, who is the creative word made human. There is a scripture in the Gospel of John. It's written in the passage of Lazarus' death and resurrection. It's written down in John chapter 11, verses 25 to 26. It reads, Jesus said to her, I'm the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live, even though they die. And whoever lives by believing me will never die. Do you believe this? Do you believe this? Those are powerful words. As soon as you answer yes, Jesus starts to create a beautiful artwork in you and with you. You become a piece of wood and Jesus starts to chip away at your exterior, removing the defensive walls. As he chips away at the bark, the inner layers are revealed. He takes his chisel and hammer and carefully shapes your being until a new form is created. In his excitement, Jesus picks up a brush and dips it into the varnish, painting layer by layer. He infuses you with his love and he steps back for a moment, totally in awe of his artwork. Every now and then, he pulls out the sanding paper 
and smooths out the edges, gently reminding you of your purpose by breathing new life into you. Something else happens when you say yes to the question that's posed in John by Jesus. You enter into a relationship with Jesus. Your being is in relationship with his chisel and hammer as you bend and move. Jesus works in and with you to bring forth the being he so desperately wants you to be. You are in relationship with the brush and varnish as you open yourself to the love that he offers. And as he steps back, every so often to smooth your edges, you deepen your relationship by repenting your sins and following Jesus' commands. There's another type of relationship, the relationship between human beings. We are in relationship with our spouses, our children, with our parents and our siblings, and we are in relationship with our friends. During this time, are we breathing love into those relationships? It can be a breath in the form of assistance, encouragement, providing basic needs. It can be a breath in the form of laughter and playing. It can be a breath in the form of a telephone call, a WhatsApp message, or a conversation over Skype. But lastly, we are in relationship with ourselves. Are you attending to the needs of your physical being, intellectual being, or your mental being? Are you attending to your spiritual needs? Let the answer to all these questions be yes. We have come to the end of our devotion today. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Lieve Jesus, dankie dat ons kan weet dat jy is die, die artist. Jy vorm ons en maak ons volgens jy wil. So dat ons die persoon kan wees wat jy wil hier ons moet wees. Laat ons asjeblief die voorbeelde wees in ander mensese levens. Laat ons ook a breath of air in hulle lewe wees. Motivation en dankbaarheid, liefde, vertrouwe, encouragement, motivation. Dank jy Jesus vir die liefde. Dank jy dat ons kan weet, jy is elke dag saam met ons, jy loop saam met ons, jy hou ons vast. Ons bid het in Jesus naam. Amen. A dead man walking to love came calling right.